Welcome to the lecture Pre-Arrival Strategies and Retirement Recommendations. In this section, we will learn about how to prepare for arrival once you have your work permit. What is CIIP? Learn about the recruiters and employment agencies in Canada. We also will learn about a service called Prepare for Canada, it's an online service for pre-arrivals and also the main event, online settlement fairs organized by Prepare for Canada. We also will learn about the Intact Virtual Expo for potential workers and permanent residents coming to Canada. We also will learn about banking in Canada and also renting in Canada. Let's start. Prepare for arrival, temporary workers. When it comes to preparing for arrival, you need to be ready to present your documents at the port of entry. And when you enter Canada, you need to tell the border service officer that you have come here to work. You have to, re you, if you have received a port of entry letter of introduction indicating that you are approved to work in Canada, you need to bring it with you. This letter is not a travel document or a work permit but you must show it when you arrive in Canada. In order for the officer at the border to issue the work permit, he will need that letter, okay? You also have supporting documents such as proof that you meet the requirements of the job, such as proof of work experience and education, a copy of reference letters, resume, diplomas, etc. A copy of your employer's positive labor market impact assessment, if required, if you require LMIA, you need to have a copy of your LMIA with the number. You also will need the offer of employment number your employer received when they submitted the offer of employment through the employer portal. If you are a LMIA exempt and coming to work for a specific employer, okay? That in this situation. It's very important that once the Border Service Officer has checked your documents and confirmed that you can enter Canada, the officer will print the actual work permit for you. So you cannot leave until you have that work permit in your hands, okay? For medical and health insurance and workers' compensation in Canada, your employer must make sure you are covered by medical and health insurance and coverage compensation when you arrive in Canada. Some provinces have uh, the public uh, health care system kick after three months uh, being residing in Canada. So sometimes employers just cover with a private insurance. They cover that, that cost until you get your, your provincial benefit, okay? Getting a social insurance number, something that also you need to uh, focus the first thing you come, uh, once you come to Canada. Um, for that, you're gonna need a social insurance number. It's a nine digit number that you will need to work in Canada and to access government uh, programs and benefits. So you cannot access any government program or benefit unless you have your SIN number with you. You should apply for a SIN as soon as possible after you arrive in Canada. And it will be easy to locate the service uh, office closer to where you're gonna be living so that way you can go next day to get your SIN number. You need to apply to your SIN number at the nearest Service Canada office. And again, you go to the website and based on the city or the employer location, you'll be able to find the, the nearest Service Canada office. If your spouse is working in Canada, if you have a spouse or common law partner who wants to work in Canada, they must apply for their own work permit. Normally, they must meet the same rules as you do. Uh, this includes getting the LMIA from Employment and Social Development in Canada if needed, okay? Your spouse or common law partner may be able to apply for an open work permit that will let them accept any job with any employer, okay? So that's another benefit. Either they get an employment with an LMIA or they can go for an open work permit. This allow them to work for any employer as far as they're attached to your application. Your children are studying and working in Canada. Your dependent children may also apply to come with you to Canada and if they wish, they can apply for a study or work permit, depending on the age. If, he is, uh, if they're going to stay less than six months, uh, probably the temporary resident visa, they can take any class, but 
normally they're going to stay with you for the two years, they're going to uh, require a study permit. Or work permit they are grown up and want to work too. Okay? Staying in Canada. You need to read your work permit carefully. It set out all the conditions for working in Canada. If you do not meet those conditions, you could be asked to leave uh, Canada. Okay? So the conditions say you cannot work in uh, healthcare or wish in a school and you do that then you in violation then you can be asked to leave Canada all right you can also apply to change the condition of the work permit or to renew it remember you're gonna have a choice also too if the first employer is not working out then you have a second offer as far as you're in status you can probably change the conditions or if you want to extend your work permit and you haven't have your, your permanent residence because you haven't started yet or because then you have another choice. But there's always a legal choice to do everything. The important thing is to do it in advance before your status is legal in Canada. Never do anything closer to the expiration of the status. Always do it in advance, okay? Based on the regulations. Uh, employment and labor standards. Each province and territory has standards to protect employers and employees. It's important that you get familiar with the employment and labor standards of the province that you are. There's a word book, you can go it on, uh, on the internet, but it's important to get familiar with uh, those duties and responsibility and protections for you too. You will need to learn labor standards include minimum wage, overtime, holidays, vacations, hours of work, rest periods, and date of rest. You can just look for these specific uh, titles in the book of the labor standard of the province. That way you're familiar with the system how it works in Canada. Every province they have essentially almost the same, but they have, like, every province uh, have a little twist. But the label uh, and employment standards are to protect the, the workers in Canada. Temporary citizens, permanent resident, every worker. Okay. And finally, get familiar with the labor standards organizations in the province, territory, or the federal work office. That way, you understand who are responsible for the labor employment standard in the province or territory where you work. Again, you can find that out on the internet, and just a good thing to know when it comes to the labor standards. All right. And here is the end of the lecture. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next lecture.